Go on. Hello, Warriors. We have another warrior with us today. Richard Cormier has been in the market since the mid 80s. Uh, you're just a pup compared to me. I started 10 years earlier on the Merck floor, Richard. Great to meet you. Great to meet you too, Dale. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, I know that, you know, you ended up in the markets in the mid 80s, but what led you there? Did you always know uh, or were you doing something completely different? What led you into the financial markets? So I, I took a job out of college. You know, I went to Wazoo uh, in uh, eastern Washington, and I took a job with uh, Chevron Oil and okay. Gas in uh, 1980. And um, the guy, one of the guys that interviewed me and was my host when I uh, went to San Francisco with Chevron, uh, we went to lunch a lot, and he was kind of like a mentor. And he was an MBA out of Michigan. And we would go, we would go out to lunch and then we would stop by the Pacific Stock Exchange. And oh, he, was, nice. he was a big, and he would look at the tickers. And yeah. so he kind of got me into all that, right? You know, when I yeah. first got out of college and started investing and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say I became more of an active trader and really understanding charts until we had the 2001 crash and then followed by the 2009 after 2009 i said you know the people that are managing my money don't seem to understand when things are going to crash so i'm going to figure it out so you know that's, that's cool. yeah you know that's when a big self-directed boom happened because you weren't the only one that felt that way so everyone in 2000 uh, that had the typical mix of a percentage of stocks, bonds, and cash, uh, didn't serve them. Uh, they go, okay. And then it happens again in 2008. And uh, here's what uh, my thoughts are. If anyone's going to lose my money, it's going to be me. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Right? I mean, yeah. isn't that what you're thinking? Not the, exactly. some salesman who, you know, seem, pretends to know about the markets, but is just following a company dictate and selling company products. Yeah. Yeah, I remember but, uh, three of my big stocks back in 2000. I had Cisco, I had EMC, yeah. and I had MicroStrategy. And I kept telling my broker, we, we, you know, the profits here are huge. We probably ought to take a little off the table. Yeah. And, yeah, anyway. Yeah, okay. So, uh, uh we all have that story. You know, actually, it's funny. Uh, you talk about that time frame. And I remember when all the dot-com stocks were getting pummeled, I was out uh, with a dentist friend of mine. He said, oh, I'm, all, I'm out of all of that stuff. I'm in Cisco. It's a good stock. And then, it, you know, it dropped 70% yeah. as well during that time frame. And, uh, you know, also the mistake people make is I also had guys, while it was just starting to fall, I had a little brokerage operation in Cardiff, uh, you know, uh, in North County. And they'd say, well, Dale, what should I do? I said, well, you know, get out of the way. Sell, you, ha you have money made. And they would say, oh, but I'll have to pay all those taxes. Yeah. So they didn't liquidate yeah. and they didn't have any taxes to sell. They had tax loss carryover for uh, quite a few years. So what was uh, really the primary book? Did you become interested in cycles? Was that uh, your first foray into it? Walt Bressert, <clears throat> the father no. of cycles in my generation. There's a, um, there's a, um, a trading blog um, run by a fellow. It's called Rambus. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Rambus no. forum. Anyway, Rambus is a, he's a, uh, Edwards and McGee guy. Okay. So he's classic Edward. And that's where I started with Ed, with Edwards. Too. And McGee, you know, understanding um, all the different um, elements of, of, you know, just what's a candlestick, right? So yeah. um, I started there, but the missing element for me over and over was time. You know, how, how do you know when a market's bought it? Is there any way to, to look at time? Because even Elliott Wave, they say, well, it's going to go down to these or your sport levels, these are your up levels. They have no idea uh, whether it's going to take a month or, or a year or, or, or five years. So um, the Brissette helps with that. It's not perfect. Nothing is. But Brissette certainly gives you, when you study it and learn it, the timing bands you need. So the one rule, I would say, every asset, anything that has a chart, has 
what's called a five to six month intermediate cycle. Now, in reality, it's more like four to seven, but on average, it's typically five to six month measured low to low. So if you understand that's your major trading cycle and it's going to last five months, if it's bullish, you should be able to enter a trade near that low and write it for three to three and a half to even four months before you get out. So that's the idea. Find, okay. a, find an asset that you can ride in an uptrend, get out when it tops, and then shift to another market. I always have believed um, <clears throat> that it's not the if in the market about direction. The art of it is the when. Yes. Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, that's and, and you found a science to support that art, um, which is what cycle theory is, a science. And in my opinion. So uh, Bressert, uh, I noticed, uh, uh, I believe uh, Stan Weinstein was part of uh, your background. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. And Okay, so here we are now with some uh, real interesting markets. Uh, is your business model, are you a trader yourself, Richard? Or yes. uh, do you have a, okay. I had, a, I had a subscription service for about four or five years related to Rambus, the people at Rambus. Oh. I would post okay. on the forum there and the fellow that ran the owned the site said, you know, your stuff's good enough to, to start a subscription service. So I worked with them, did that for four or five years, but found I was probably working as hard in retirement as I was when I was working. So I gave yeah. that up after about four or five years and I, and, and it's, and it's been good for me. So, you know, I, I've got a little bit of, I've got some thoughts um, and then I've got a little a short PowerPoint. I have some, um, some charts okay. we can look at. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And uh, congratulations on th uh, throttling down. Yeah. Because, yeah, you I, know, I, I, I try and it's just my paradigm won't let me. Okay. There's times uh, I'll be talking to people and go, oh, you know, I, I should probably, you know, start throttling down a little bit. And at the same time, I'm putting out a tweet. Yeah. That's how strong that <laughs> that program is, that plow horse. Yeah. I'm a plow horse, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, I, I'm uh, very much looking forward to what you have to show us. So take it away. Okay. So what I've got here is just a, a couple of slides to talk about, uh, um, you know, financial markets and cycles. You know, Surf City at Surf City Cycles is my handle on Twitter. Um and, is that uh, a picture of you on the board? No, I, I wish. I live about <laughs> a, my wife and I live about a mile from the ocean here in the in the you know San Clemente, San Juan Capistrano, Capo Beach area. Nice. Nice. And uh, so it's it's just we we I, I I I cycles. I was looking for something similar with cycles, and yeah. somehow I came up with Surf City. So yeah, I, I like I have a tagline for you, but you don't have a service, <laughs> but I do have a tagline. Oh. Great surfers don't try and catch every wave. They do go. wait for the right setup. Wait for the right setup. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a little bit. We talked a little bit about this. The 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 Edwards and McGee. Yeah. The, the Walter is the element of time. So that's the main the main focus here is that time is this huge element that that most ele most trading uh, tools don't really address, and that's where I, I really like. Um, the whole, the whole uh, time. Did you look into Gan? That was his whole thing. Yeah, you know, I I looked at Gan, and I had a I had a a colleague that was a Gan enthusiast, um, and I taught him Brissett, and he posts on Twitter. He actually has far more followers than I do, um, but he um, he I don't know that he really ever, in my opinion, really learned all the rules of Brissette. So the problem with GAN, as I see it, is they try to find an echo year. So they start with a bullish or bearish bias. So they, they, they say, well, this I'm expecting this year to follow that year. Well, if you start with an echo year, you're already starting out with a bullish or bearish bias, right? Right, right. So, so that, that, and bias kills, right? You've got to be objective. No kidding. Yeah, so. It kills if you don't know how to manage risk. Yeah. Anything kills. Yeah, exactly. All so, right. so yeah, I, I know, I know a bit about GAM, but I, I stick with Brissette. So okay. this, this next slide is, is, um, is, 
you know, the standard Elliott wave, and I use Elliott wave in my practice as well, because I find it lines up with cycles very well. So this is your typical market cycle, you know, up, down, up, down, you've got right now, we're just seeing all the, um, you'll probably have to click one of them to show us the example, because right now I'm just seeing all of these real small yes. boxes. But, but this is just the Elliott wave, you got five up and three back. So you, you typically, an Elliott wave pattern is Five waves up. But we're not seeing a chart right now. Oh, yeah, you're That's not. That's my point. Yeah. What? So hold on. We're seeing a whole page full of, uh, there must be 25 charts on here. Interesting. Hold on just a second. That's um, the page we're seeing. So I thought you were going to just start you, clicking you. on them. Okay. Oh, there's your PowerPoint at, on the top, and it's okay. not opened. Huh. I've got it open on my screen, so I need to figure out what I'm doing here. Why don't you unshare and then reshare? Uh, re okay, stop sharing. Yeah, now share again. Same uh, spot. Share screen. Okay. Check that. Why is Microsoft PowerPoint share? Okay, so okay, got it. Okay, so got it. do you see this? Yes, we got okay. it. Okay, got it. Okay, so this is your typical typical cycle: up, down, up, down, and then in Elliott waves, you have five waves up, and in a bullish pattern, and three waves down. Correct. So that's your typical Elliott wave. And I find that cycles really match Elliott wave theory because both Elliott wave and cycles are based on investor sentiment. So they need you need to have a retrace to certain levels in order to, to reset attract. investment center back to bearish for the next leg up, right? Right. So what, what you find in a typical Elliott wave structure is that in five waves up, waves two and four are meant to convince you that the, yeah, the, it's, the over. it's over. And then when you get the ABC correction, you'll typically drop below wave four, but not wave two. If you break below wave two, then something else is going on, right? Your, your, your cycle is, your, your longer trend is over. So, but that's basically, it's all about investor uh, sentiment and right now in certain markets um you know that's you need more time to consolidate so that's the main year the main idea here is that that elliott waves and um and and, and cycles are are uh, are compatible and that longer cycles dominate that's huge in brissett you have to understand so i look i spend a lot of time on monthly charts and weekly charts don't meant to spend much time on daily i see way too many people focused on daily charts when they don't even know what the longer monthly trend is. Yeah. They uh, uh, they only know what a microscope is and uh, mm -hmm. you you're you're kind of an astronaut. You you use a telescope. Correct. Get that view. Okay. So so this is the the emotional side. So, you know, you you've seen this before you yeah. you know when you're up here <clears throat> the old adage on euphoria is when you're yelling you should be selling and down here when you're depressed, when you're crying, you should be buying, right? <clears throat> so, so how do you, and then cycle time is, is measured low to low. So if you've got a tool that can kind of give you an idea of when that low might be occurring, then you might be able to position yourself for a buy. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to give you some real time examples. All right. So we're going to close this down. And I'm going to go back to, um, this is from October. This chart is from October of 2022. Do you see that? Yeah, I see that time and price. Okay. So you're, you're, I'm going you're to move looking at the tweets. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is basically, um, in October, I had a Fibonacci resistance for the dollar. We're just seeing the time and price examples. You may have to Yes, I'm, I'm showing you. So if, if I, I called the U.S. dollar top back okay. in uh, 
in late October of 2022. Okay. Got okay? It. So yeah. how did I how did I know that? How does how did I know that it might be topping? Well, first of all, I had Fibonacci resistance near 115 based yeah. on the longer pattern. And I had a structure where I know that the longer cycle, the US dollar has a as a, a six-month cycle, has a yearly cycle, it has a three-year cycle, and then it has a 15-year cycle. Okay, low to low. So here's your 15-year cycle back in 2008, right? So here's your Elliott wave uh, one up. Here's your Elliott wave two low. Here's your Elliott wave three. We're not seeing a chart, Richard. You, you're not? Your cursor's moved. No, I, 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 that's what I've been saying. Oh. I still see the slide that says time and price examples, but we're not seeing the examples. Okay, let, me do, let me do stop sharing. And let me go back to. So you had a lot of confluence in the dollar index coming in there. You had yeah, fibs, so, you had cycles. Okay. Uh, I always say the trade is better when you have a, 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 you know, a good case, more evidence. Do you see this now, Dale? No, I see you. Yes. How do I? I've never had this problem with sharing. So. Let me go back to here and I to where's my share again? On the bottom of the screen, green box. See a green box? I see this is boy. I I see, let's see, there's the green button. Okay, share screen. Do you see this? Yeah, now okay. we got it. Okay, sorry. So now this is where you know, back in October 31st, 30, this is, this is my chart. Do you see that? Yeah, yep. So, so I had Fibonacci resistance at 115, and I had a 15-year low back in uh, 2008. And you fast forward, and this is actually 13 years. So, so the cycles aren't exact. You can't use the cycle two and chart chart because it it assumes the cycles are exact, and they're not. So these green arrows are three-year cycle lows. This one takes takes place in four years, but but so three to four years, and then you've got a 15-year low. And this is essentially what I call an Elliott wave. So you got Elliott wave one, Elliott wave two, Elliott wave three, Elliott wave four, and now Elliott wave five. So I'm expecting an ABC correction. You could be wrong, but that's my expectation. Mm -hmm. And right now I, I showed support and where did it find support? 100. Yeah. So that was back, that was back in, in October uh, of last year. So I'm going to close this chart if I can figure out how to do that. For a yeah, in bit. fact, uh, the tweet that attracted me was you showing the dollar turning up okay. uh, from these yeah, and levels. It, and it is, and it is, I was thinking it was going to go lower, but it's, so when I get this, this, I'm trying to go to the next screen and how do I, let's go. Click your screen. Whatever is showing up on your screen will yeah. show up on this one, your screen okay. sharing. So you just Got need it. to go to another, I'm gonna whatever do else thing. you want to share. So let's go to my cycle folder again. And do you see this, Dale? Not Dale. yet. Nope. Not yet. I guess each time I have to. When you stop sharing, you would, then you have to reshare. Yeah. But you really don't need to stop sharing. You should yeah, just be able to change what you have on your screen. So when I did that, um, I uh, last time I didn't have this this problem. Here okay, it comes. So, All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Do you see this there, one? Yeah. Okay. So this is the same time frame, almost the exact same day that the dollar was was topping back in yeah. October. I was yeah. saying you've got an eight-year low uh, forming in gold. 
So you can see the eight year low here. Um, then you got an eight year low here. And then I was speculating based on time and price that you hit an eight year low here. And I was right. So again, that's how you use, this. these are examples of how I use cycle times and price action to calibrate when an important low might be. So if you bought here, you did pretty well, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so nice those, are, those are, those are a couple of examples. Uh, now you don't get every, every call, right? Um, but of those are a couple of, of examples. Now, the last one I want to show you is um, the SPX. Now, do you see this? Yes. Okay. So this was back in March, mid-March, where I was saying, you know, you've got a you've got a cycle top, you got a SPX four year cycle low here for COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And and you topped in year two. This is year three. Now you can't have a uh, you can't have a four year cycle in year three, but not likely. So my expectation is you're going to come up to resistance around forty three, maybe forty four hundred. And you're going to form a B wave, an Elliott wave. So this is A, you're going to get a B, and then you're going to drop down and test slower support sometime later this year is my expectation. You know, a lot of the bears are waiting for the, you know, everyone's going to call 4,200 a breakout, Richard, yeah, because, you know, it's a flat resistance zone. And so the technicians will embrace a 4,200 close. And, uh, but they're, a lot of people looking at that fib up at 4300 and they're not sure yet could this possibly be an example to where we don't get to 4300 and we're already on our way down possibly my expectation would be you, you're going to see 43 tested probably when i look at cycle times i'm looking at potentially an early june top so between now and early okay. june you could test 4300 Okay, that's enough time. Say, for example, they really do put together a debt deal. That would trigger it because benign inflation numbers hasn't. So I'm trying yeah. to think of what, you know, what catalysts. But you don't need to know the catalysts. You just need to know your cycles. Early June top. And, and exactly. Then, and then the ta you watch for the ta catalyst to develop. That's the, that's the yeah. why. You're looking for what's going to happen, but you don't know why. Well, if the dollar has turned up, uh, that could be part of the equation. It's never really friendly for the markets, uh, having a strong dollar. I actually thought risk off would happen first, and then the dollar would turn. Um, that's what has me, you know, a little skeptical. But I think this is going to be one. If we do rally, Richard, do you think uh, I have targets up around 108, 110 in the Dixie? And... Uh, do you think, uh, you know, with all the articles came in line with yours too, uh, your work too, for the last month, I've been saturated by people asking me about de-dollarization. So we we really weren't even in a terrible fall yet. And the shoeshine boy would only take euros for me. Wow. I'm kidding. But yeah. that's, what it <laughs> that's what it felt like. So, yeah. you know. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to get squeezed out here on this dollar rally. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get to 110. I have 110 as pretty major resistance. I have yeah. um, 104 to 105 as a pivot, right? Uh, I'll okay. show you the chart. Okay. So, this is, so based on the examples I showed you, this is a quick summary, if you will, by asset okay. of where I see the multi-year um, Multi year cycle trend, the yearly trend, and the current five to six month intermediate trend. So okay. I've got examples of all these in charts. I just thought I'd let you sit on this a little while and say, what do you want to see? So the year, yeah. the US dollar, I have it, you know, I have the three year cycle already topped in right. early before year two and likely heading lower. Right. Uh, but so, so to me, uh, we may have just found a yearly cycle low, but but I have a chart that shows pretty clearly where I'm expecting resistance and then where I'm expecting it to head. And all these, I, I have some thoughts. Okay. Uh, why don't we go with um, gold? A lot of okay. interest in precious metals. Uh, 
you know, you identified an eight-year low at 1600. Um, I'm trying to uh, advise people the best levels to get into. I have numbers about 1840, 1850 as a possibility. Curious to see what you're projecting with your cycles. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking that um, 1900 is likely going to hold. Okay. Um, 19, maybe 1880 is what I'm thinking, but we'll see. Yeah. So, so here's, here's that eight year cycle low we talked about here. Here's your eight year cycle low, right? Oh, okay. Okay. That was also, I'll show you later. Oh, hold on. Do you see this chart? First of all? Yeah. yeah. Monthly okay. gold, eight year okay. gold. Okay. So oh, your eight okay. year cycle. Okay. I thought that the low at 1600 was an eight year cycle. Oh, well, yeah, it, it was it an is. early one. It All is. Right. It's an early one. So, okay. so, in fact, people said, you know, they say rich or surf, you know, how do you, that's seven years. Why do you, why do you say that's an eight year low? Well, the first thing you do is you say, well, where's the four year? And, and this is the uh, four year cycle low in year three. So this is one, two, three. So your, your four years, your first four year cycle live, which was your Elliott wave two low yeah. came early in year three. And now you count one, two, three, four, and that's your next four-year cycle low in year seven. So this is wave four, this is wave two, and this is, this is an Elliott wave triangle here, and this is an Elliott wave expanding flat, right? For a four. For a four, for a okay. four. So there's okay. your Elliott wave. And now I have Elliott, this is, this is wave five starting. So this is wave one up, this is a one, two. You're gonna get another one, two, Followed by wave three and wave three, I'm expecting to to to, to, to top <clears throat> sometime this fall, maybe October, maybe November. Uh, but I'm seeing a pullback into the summer. Okay, interesting. Um, so uh, on, um, uh, like yeah, I think you were saying, it was going to be a three. So I consider C waves and threes to be money waves. Because at times, many times, they're fib extensions of one. Mm. So it's a real high pain wave. Uh, sometimes you get 1.618 of what one was. And that's a, you know, a nice target, especially if you had a decent one, like from 1,000 to 1,400. Yeah. So, but yeah. You're, you're talking about this being five, so... Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm seeing this is the first leg of wave five up. Yeah. Is okay. what I'm seeing. Yeah. So you're getting a triple, you're getting a reaction to a triple top. You're going to get three of five on the pullback. Yeah, let's, let's see. Um, now, what I want to do here is close this and, and go to um, this one. This, this shows you. Yeah. The whole bull trend, and this this isn't too cluttered. The, the important part, do you see this slide? Yep, got it. Okay, so what? Look at the look at the fifty month moving average. These this is a monthly chart, monthly candles. But look at the fifty month moving average. Notice how on the 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 low back in two thousand one two thousand, you were below that fifty. See how see it was riding it down. It kept coming up and testing. I remember. And Breaks through that. I, I remember months. hoping for a bottom there. Yeah. And 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 people were buying it for uh Y2K and the bottom came when the central banks made an arrangement they were going to stop selling gold. Yeah. But but the move came in, you know, right into uh 2K, you know, yeah. right into Y2K. So everything people were worried about for Y2K happened afterwards. <laughs> Here's, right. Here, here's what's interesting about this chart, Dale. If you look at where waves uh, two and waves four, these are super cycle waves two. Look yeah. at where price ended up below that 50 month moving average, right? Yeah. And then here in this current wave, this current yeah. move up, it found it right there. So that's bullish. Yeah. yeah. That's bull so bullish behavior is is look where it found that low. So what a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I like, you know, moving averages are important and cycles. It's the 10 moving average gives you your change of direction on all, on all, on the daily, weekly, monthly charts. 
the 10 moving average tells you when you've got a trend change. So you can see right here, the 10 moving average lowing into the, was holding price down. And now this whole way up, look at the support it gives it yeah. most of the time, yeah. except when the 50 comes into play at major lows. And what a great this, look. And this is a significant uh, pivot here. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, there's one uh, area of the market where there's really not a lot of clarity uh, would be the interest rate picture. If we could wrap it with what you see either in TLT or 10-year yields, uh, anything interest rate since, you know, most people believe the Fed is done um, and that rates are going to be much more benign. And a lot of people thinking that the bonds are a great value. Um, looks like you have uh, them as bottoming here. Potentially. You know, here's where I'm... I. So it's even gonna, murky for you, all right? You know, because yeah, so, I was going to start. I I thought it looked bullish, ascending triangle, Edwards and McGee. You know, flat top, yeah. ascending bottom. Uh, but yesterday it looked like it almost broke down, but it didn't follow through. And there's uh, record net short positions, base of COT on uh, Treasury. So that's got me conflicted about what to do here. Here's the, here's. Yeah, I see on a bunch of different markets. What's interesting here is that I'm seeing the debt ceiling discussions as potentially being more significant going forward than maybe any of us realize. You just assume those things are always going to be approved. But, you know, when when former President Trump came out at the town hall. Yeah, he said, let's try it. Yeah, it advocated a default. Um, you there know, are I, people in Congress that were already advocating it. Well, exactly, but but so if he's advocating it, there's a lot of people in the GOP that are resident to go against him. So he he just made penning any deal for McCarthy with Biden extremely difficult, right? And how about this, Richard? As my thought, we know what you're looking for in the S and P's after this B wave's over, right? Um, you know, the, we have this banking crisis. Uh, we should be. Uh, at least having a lousy economy next year into re-election. I don't think Biden wants it. I don't think either of them want a deal so that they could blame the other guy. Uh, that would give him cover. And you know what? Even give the Fed cover for what they did if we had some chaos due to the debt ceiling. That's why I don't think it's going to get done because neither one of them want to get it done. This is theatrics right now, showing best efforts. We're talking. Uh, we could have a deal by the end of the week. Do you think I'm nuts? I Here's what I'm suggesting. I'm, I'm thinking you're going to have a temporary um, kick the can down the road for okay. a couple of months. All right. And then I think you're gonna, they're going to they're gonna postpone it till late July or August. So my thinking is something significant. The only way here's you see my U.S. dollar chart here. Yeah. So this is this is your one ten you mentioned. Okay. This is your pivot point. The pivot point is between the um, fifty moving average and the thirty four moving EMA, and and I'm expecting it to come up and find resistance in this pivot, and then head right. down and check this pivot right here. Okay. Now, the only way that happens, Dale, is if something out of the debt ceiling, you know, that's why I'm, I'm questioning bonds. If the debt ceiling, if they decide to not get a deal, bonds are going to crash, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, well, I mean, you know, the RSI on the weekly, uh, you know, I, I do RSI work. When price and momentum confirm, that's rarely a low. It's a low, not the low. Most of those come with uh, divergences, not yeah. with confirmed highs and lows. And uh, that's what you had in bonds. Um, you know, I had a guy I used to interview um, who does all used to do all kinds of astro stuff. And uh, he recently passed away from liver cancer. And he made sure he got the message out. He called the March low in the S&P. And he was emphatic when he was sick saying there's going to be the crashes in July. 
I don't know if I'm going to make it. Mm. Uh, but he, you know, he's a cycle guy too. He doesn't uh, use what you use, a lot of planet work. Um, do you have any kind of potential uh, cycle low due in July in the stock market? Um, so yes, if you if you look at um, cycle times, let, let's go. So um, I'll, I'll jump to the SPX real, real quick. But here's, here's that US dollar again, and here's why okay. I'm suspecting it's gonna move lower. So if you, if you look at the three-year lows um, yeah. out, of, out of 14, you got a low in month 44, you got a low in month 36, you're now in month 27. So you topped in month 20, I'm sorry, week 20. You see the tops here, these are longer. Yeah. And then, so I'm thinking with a top in week 20, you're, you're likely headed lower based on time. You got the 10 moving, uh, 10 month moving average curling down. You got the, um, the 34 EMA providing support on the monthly. But I, I, think, I think you're going to come down and test the 50. That's my okay. sense. And I don't know about anything. Where's that, 98 ish? What's that? Around 98? Yeah, around 98. Yeah, okay. and and then I use I use candlestick touches. You know, these are Fibonacci, but also y you find that price gets attracted to a certain level, and so I tend to use horizontal levels for resistance. And here's your Fibonacci retrace, and you're right, right around 105 is your is your 38 percent fib. Okay. So that's 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 kind of the dollar, and why I think you know from a time perspective, I think it's headed low. You mentioned the SPX. Yeah. So if I look at So this was this was back in April where I did this, and and I and I said to myself, you know, again, you got a four-year cycle low at fifty-two months. You got a four-year cycle low at fifty months. You're at month thirty here. That would be awfully early. So that's why I'm saying, if this is the top in year two, you're going to come up and test that resistance, and then you're going to come down and find maybe in July. I need to look at times. I don't know if I have it in July. So you're in, let's see, you're in uh, month one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, I, I don't have an answer for you if it's July, but I think July, August is, is there's something going on in a number of markets where I'm expecting turns. So, so the shorter answer is yes. Okay. All right. Cause uh, I, I know, uh, he, you know, put his heart and soul spirit into his work and, um, you know, you guys uh, share the belief of cycles. I mean, there's many ways to look at cycles and um, I, this was a great interview. Uh, okay. really, you know, really appreciate you being open and giving. So you're on Twitter just to give it away, huh, Richard? Yeah, you know, I, I sometimes I'll post five times in a day. Sometimes I'll post five times in a month. Um, I post when I can. Uh, I've got a bunch of other things I'm, I'm doing these days uh, in retirement. Um, I get out to the, I, I'm into astrophotography. So I get out to the desert uh, several times a year. And I'll do that about four or cool. five times, uh, uh, four or five days at a time. And I'll just be off the grid, right? Yeah, so. well, you know what? I, I'm going to ask you because i've never been to a retirement dinner for a trader have you <laughs> i can't say that i have uh, you're not retired uh, you you know it's hotel california richard yeah. you could check out but you can never leave and uh so glad i saw that tweet about the dollar and our paths crossed uh would love to talk to you again down the road see how these things worked out and um you're now my trading warrior brother. Retired, okay. but you're my trading warrior brother. You, you got through an interview with me. Thank you for your giving spirit and sharing your hard work of all the years you put into it. You bet. And I and I would say let's both bookmark around that uh, late July, early August time frame and see what happens. I'm I'm smelling some some turns in that in that time frame. So let's 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 see what yeah. happens. I'd like to see like 130, 120 Apple by then. Yeah. Hey, I, right. I have one one uh, question for you. Uh, your last interview um, a week or so ago, you had a, I think it was uh, David Hunter on, and you asked yeah. him a question about uh, uh, about the Fed um, uh, and 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 are we creating big banks and buying yeah. you know 
And I, I just, you set him up with a question and he didn't bite, but I, I thought it was very intriguing because I do, I do think that, you know, uh, th there's an agenda there in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so yeah. Be okay. Careful. And we know, and we know what it is. Yeah. It's a takeover of the treasury to run our currency. And, yeah. um, that's my view, but you know, I'm just a kid from Chicago. What do I know? So thanks again, Richard. I'm, I'm really glad we met and look forward to, you know, touching base with each other every quarter or so. Sounds, Sounds great. Good? Sounds Take good. All right. Uh, Richard Cormier, everyone. And you can follow his stuff at surf city underscore cycles. And uh, Richard's going to put up on his Twitter, the great surfers don't try and catch every wave. They too wait for setups. Ha, 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 ha.